Hi, I'm Dr. Chad Larson. Thanks for joining me in another episode of Keep It Real. In my private practice, I treat a lot of athletes, entrepreneurs, and executives. And there's one common theme between all three of those categories, and that is they're short on time. You may fall into one of these categories. In fact, you might have two of those categories. You might be an athlete and an entrepreneur. And what I mean by athlete is not somebody that is necessarily on a professional sports team or they're a competitive endurance athlete or something like that. Just somebody who um, strongly incorporates exercise and fitness and sport into their life. And so um, what I've noticed is that things have to be efficient. When you're working with um, athletes, entrepreneurs, and executives, that when I'm making suggestions, whether it's a dietary change or some kind of lifestyle change, it has to fit into their lifestyle. I can't try to package their life into a completely different lifestyle that is not congruent with, uh, with what they need to do to live their life. So sometimes we have to be creative with our recommendations. So it right, reminds me of a recommendation that I like to make. And the recommendation comes from a study that was published in 1996. And the study was uh, published by a researcher named uh, Itsumi uh, Tabata, T-A-B-A-T-A, -A -A, Itsumi Tabata, out of Japan. And what they set to figure out is um, how does one um, increase their aerobic activity. Aerobic activity is important for efficiency of cardiovascular function. In other words, the way that the heart and the blood vessels work. The more efficient the heart works, um, the less work that it has to put out there, and the more efficient and the, healthy, the healthier the heart works. In other words, if there's a certain amount of stress that's put on the heart, the heart creates things like collateral vascularization and so it makes it work more efficiently. It makes the heart get the blood to where it needs to go in all the different cells more efficiently. And so researchers who are into uh, uh, sports and fitness, this is a, a common goal to try to figure out ways to um, help people be more uh, efficient cardiovascularly and that's through aerobic fitness. But there's another type of fitness that we're interested in, and that is anaerobic fitness or anaerobic capacity. And that's uh, another system in the body. But research hasn't really shown us a lot of things that improve both aerobic and anaerobic fitness. So there's an interesting study that was done that uh, evaluated um, two different types of exercise. One type of exercise was um, more of a, a long-term, let's call it um, long distance, moderate intensity type um, exercise. And that's, you know, going out and jog for an hour at moderate intensity, or going out and uh, cycling for an hour uh, with moderate intensity. And that definitely has been shown to improve your um, your aerobic capacity, but it doesn't do anything for your anaerobic system. And so what the, the researchers did something very interesting. They had two different groups. One group did that typical type, type of training. They trained for um, 60 minutes, uh, I think it was about five days a week for six weeks, and then they me measured their aerobic and their anaerobic capacity. And um, it clearly showed that it increased their uh, aerobic capacity a little bit. Um, and then they took a group that they did high intensity interval training, or I think they called it high intensity intermittent training. Um, the term has kind of changed a little bit. We call it HIIT training, H-I-I-T, high intensity uh, interval training. And um, what they did was they um, had, the subjects of the study train very intensely for 20 seconds and then they would take a 10 second break and they did seven to eight cycles of this so if you're doing the math if you 
work out very hard for 20 seconds and rest for 10 seconds and you do that let's say eight times how much time did you just put in to that exercise routine four minutes that's only a four minute routine and so and then they studied multiple um, uh, biological measurements of aerobic and anaerobic fitness and what they found out is that certainly increased their anaerobic anaerobic is the system that's more involved in burst and strength type of exercise and so it significantly increased their anaerobic capacity which was kind of expected but even in such a short period of time um, that was a little bit surprising and then what they did is they also measured their aerobic fitness and they found out something very interesting that they had a significant improvement in their aerobic fitness but what we've are always known up to that point remember this was 1996 what they always knew up to that point was the only way to improve your aerobic fitness was to do aerobic training but what they found out in the study that by doing burst strength high intensity type training that it actually increased their anaerobic and their aerobic fitness so this kind of uh, changed the way that we think about exercise and there's been lots and lots of studies since 1996 to um, validate validate that work by other researchers and Tabata and his group have uh, have really built on that literature and there's lots more detail that we know about that type of fitness and so um, this is a, a great way that you know I oftentimes hear when I'm making recommendations that um, that people don't have the time to um, to do certain things and so this is a really great technique great uh, way to exercise to build both aerobic and anaerobic capacity and um, the researcher's name was Tabata and oftentimes um, in certain circles it's actually just referred to as a as a Tabata workout uh, because of the the name of the researcher that came up with this and so basically what it is is um, you can take uh, running um, or you can do it on a, on a cycle on a bike you can do it swimming in fact you can even do it in squats bench press it's now been extrapolated to all different types of exercise but the idea is that you exercise very very hard in other words if you're running it's a full-out sprint for 20 seconds and then you rest for 10 seconds and you do that eight times and uh, that equals four minutes and so it's four minutes of intense exercise and that's it in four minutes you're done and um, and you've just uh, improved your aerobic and anaerobic activity and if you do that on a regular basis it's very quick very easy um, and uh, and you could really improve your fitness level so um, a couple of things to think about with sprinting if sprinting is new to you you want to make sure that you uh, you get into it kind of slowly um, you don't go all out if you don't have the fitness capacity to do that uh, but you want it's something that you want to build up to and even if you are trained and um, your body is fit enough to to do sprints you want to make sure that you're warmed up you know you want to give yourself um, a good warm up for five or ten minutes to really make sure that you've got blood pumping in those tendons like the Achilles tendon that's going to work so hard in a sprint you want to make sure that you're not going to lead to any injuries or your hip flexors that kind of thing you want to make sure you're warmed up Time, on a slight Second. side note from that is um, um, I've seen uh, some people who take a certain type of antibiotic um, could increase the chance of rupturing their tendons particularly the Achilles tendon so the family of medications that can do this is called fluoroquinolones and you might have heard of a medication an antibiotic called Cipro and Cipro is a really serious uh, medication it's usually prescribed when there is an infection that is uh, very deep in the system like a kidney infection or bladder infection or um, 
prostatitis or something like that where the medication really needs to penetrate deep into the into the tissues otherwise if it's something like you know a throat infection they use you know like an amoxicillin or um, erythromycin or something like that but if you've been prescribed Cipro even in the recent past just uh, you know a month or two ago I would really consider um, not doing sprinting just yet because it's been very clear that um, if you've been on this medication you're at a much higher risk of of uh, tendon ruptures and with sprinting you put so much pressure on certain tendons you can increase the chance of getting a rupture so it's not a super you know uh, often prescribed uh, medication but it's something that you should know if you've been prescribed an antibiotic make sure you know which one it was and if it was um, Cipro or something in that family of antibiotics then uh, give sprints a rest for a little while until that medication has been totally worked out of your system. So um, I'm going to do this workout today and uh, um, I hope you try it. So as usual, thanks for joining me on the show and I'll talk to you soon. Keep it real.